called the Dark Triad. The Dark Triad consists of three personality characteristics. Narcissism, Machiavellianism, and Psychopathy. Long story short, you can read the article. Go to Psychology Today today and uh, check it out. People were given the chance to, quote, kill three bugs, three roly-polies, who were named. Very cute names. One was Muffin. I can't remember the name of the other two. But they were given the opportunity, among other jobs, they were told that they were applying for some kind of job, and there were four tasks that they would need to perform in order to show their, I suppose, uh, versatility in different working conditions. And I'll get to those in a minute. But these bugs were named, given cute names. They were not actually killed. The article makes sure makes sure that we know they were not actually killed. But they were dropped in a coffee grinder-like machine that simulated the sound of a crunching bug. And so these people, when they did this, they believed this is what they were doing, was putting this living creature into a grinder. Those that chose to, quote, kill the bugs who were, again, not actually killed, the study revealed that 27% of the people that chose to kill, uh, 27% of the people chose to kill the bugs. The bug killers had a higher sadism rating than the other groups. Now, of course, this is the result of an intense questionnaire, a barrage of questions that the subjects had to finish, you know, before the bug-killing part. The bugs, as I said, were given cute names, were in paper cups with their names written on the cups to psychologically give them personality. In this case, they are not simply a bug, but they have a personality. They have a cute name. Still, the people that chose to kill the bugs instead of a, uh, well, clean the toilet, um, place their hands in ice-cold water, or help the experimenter kill the bugs. Of these four, crushing the bugs themselves in a grinder, putting their hands in ice-cold water, or cleaning a toilet, or helping the experimenter kill the bugs, chose to kill the bugs themselves. These people who did admitted they got greater pleasure from killing the bugs themselves. So this study would suggest that these people are simply sadists. What is a sadist? Let's ask the Google overlord. Quote, A sadist is someone who enjoys inflicting pain on others, sometimes in a sexual sense. Sadists like seeing other people hurt. A sadist is the opposite of a masochist who enjoys being in pain. A sadist is all about hurting others, usually to get off sexually. However, this word is about more than sex. Wow, Google. Even your definitions are bordering the need to be censored. The slang, anyway. But this is the most blatant blatant definition of a word Google Almighty has ever given me. So are we then to assume that this Joseph Price, who obviously can be classified as a sadist, somehow derives some sort of sexual pleasure by abusing a camel at a live nativity scene lovingly sponsored by the Pikeville Kentucky Medical Center. I promise you, I will absolutely follow this story and this idiot, Joseph Price. Some of these people should consider themselves lucky that I am broke. That the Social Security decided again to cut my pay because of a little glitch in paperwork in which where I, you know, 
ignorantly won a photo competition a couple years ago. And it just keeps popping up that they need to get this back pay of, you know, 90 to 100 and something dollars a month. That is pressing. But $6.3 trillion lost by the Pentagon is no problem. Absolutely no problem. Ah, so, that's the animal cruelty section, to be continued, soon with an interview of someone in the veterinary field about what Kentucky needs to do to get out of the gutter. For animal cruelty laws. Up next, news from the front lines at Standing Rock. Is the government actually supporting the water protectors in their fight? A recent story may actually be supporting that very idea. Back in a moment. A vision came to me when the sun went into shadow and I lay dying. And in my death, I saw the heavens of the white robe. Yes, it is as they describe it. But also there, my children, all the Indians that ever roamed this earth. All your beloved ancestors and mine, and those young ones who were taken by the white man's diseases, do not grieve for them. They want you to know that they are happy. Yes. And you, should not grieve for yourselves because here is what the white robes did not tell you. The white man, my children, will soon be no more. That was the great Wes Studi from one of my most favorite films, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. You should really check it out if you haven't seen it. Kind of surprised, Glow. I, I think I chose the wrong clip there because it was supposed to last a little bit longer. And I'm in the process of trying to make some more Celestial Seasons. Celestial Seasonings, Sleepy Time Tea, man, that's some great stuff. You know, you should really look up the history of Celestial Seasonings. Ironically, all great things seem to come out in 1972. The Squishal Media in um, Lexington, a source for practically everything pagan, opened just two hours after I was born, the very day. Love that place. There's a definite connection there. In fact, I just got back from getting some white sage there. Uh, my wife and I picked up, and uh, normally I don't let myself run out, but um, <laughs> there's been a lot of negative energy around this house. A lot. And one day, I'm going to enlighten you completely on the reasons. For those that actually know me closely, um... It's very clear that I was this family into which I exist and am um, is not my own. Discovered this stuff recently. But anyway, let's get back to the Standing Rock. According to your news leader, KFWR Bismarck, North Dakota, the federal government has denied Morton County's request for federal officers' help with the Dakota Access Pipeline protests. 
the government will not be sending 100 officers to help with the protests. Um, and this guy, I love this name, Win Hornbuckle. I absolutely love that name. That's that's the thing that stuck out. Hornbuckle. I love it. When Hornbuckle, a spokesman for the Justice Department, says sending Border Patrol and members of the U.S. Marshals Special uh, uh, Special S Service of Special Operations Group might escalate, not cease, tensions between law enforcement and protesters. Smart move, Hornbuckle. Although I can't remember a time when tensions ever were high between the first people and the United States government. Way to think. Absolutely. In response, Morton County Sheriff Saruman, I mean, Kyle oh, Kirkmeyer, Kirkmeyer, Kyle Kirkmeyer, said in a statement, yeah, Saruman, yep, you got it, <laughs> only in Washington, D.C. would facilitating meetings be considered. Quote, action. In response to the kind of aggression our law enforcement officers and North Dakota citizens have had to face over these past months. Let me go back here and say only in Washington, D.C. would facilitating meetings be considered action in response to the kind of aggression our law enforcement officers and North Dakota citizens have had to face over these past months. Aggression, you say, Kyle Kirkmeyer, is that the name? Kirkmeyer, Kyle Kirkmeyer, you, you are an absolute ass. Aggressions, aggressions. Yes, let's see. Let's take a look at some of these aggressions. Private security, who had absolutely no legal authority, were allowed to harass the people with German Shepherd police dogs, in which a four-year-old girl was in the face. A pipeline security employee raced through crowds of people in his truck, then brandished a weapon, pointing it at unarmed people. Now, you gotta remember, these people are completely unarmed. Horses have been shot. A 13-year-old girl was shot in the face with rubber bullets, but keep in mind that just because they are rubber bullets, it as exits the gun at the same speed as an actual bullet. A 20-something-year-old woman lost her arm because a concussion grenade detonated literally on her arm. Recently, the water protectors were sprayed with mace and water on a night in which the temperature was 17 degrees. Now again, I will point out, as I always do when I discuss this, that we as people, should we commit an assault, or a, a, any type of act on anyone. I mean, if I sprayed some little old ladies around the corner with water, tomorrow, I believe the temperature is supposed to be 15 degrees or so here, I'm not sure, and they catch pneumonia, and they die two months later, my assault charge will be upgraded to potentially a murder charge. At the very least, it would be plea bargained down to a type of manslaughter. Nonetheless, if I commit that offense, or you commit that offense, guess what? You pay the price. Now, when these people were sprayed with water, the response of the police and the fire department, I guess, who was there, so they were putting out small fires that the people were setting as, you know, protesters. But video clearly shows that there were no fires, and if there were fires, according to one elder, 
on the front line.